It may be raining SUVs in every segment of the market, but there's always one car that stirs up everything every time it's in the news. Yes, we're talking about the Maruti Suzuki Swift and there will be a new one in India coming a full 19 years after the first generation was launched in the country. We saw it in Japan last year and now it's coming to India. And here is everything that you need to know about the next generation Maruti Suzuki Swift. Despite being termed an all-new generation car, one glance and you can tell that it looks more like an evolution. And that's not a bad thing at all, which is something we'll get to later in the video. Let's start off with some of the design highlights. Now up front, you get a new grille, new headlamps and a new bumper. While in profile, you can see quite a few significant changes. The most significant being that the door handles have moved from the C-pillar to the body. You also get an all-black roof depending on the variant, which gives the car a floating roof look. Finally, there are some nice new machine-cut alloy wheels that really perk up the design of the vehicle. Finally, when you move to the back, the rear bumper has become chunkier, the lamps have become sharper, and the C-shape, which is uh, kind of there in the current generation Swift, becomes much more prominent in this vehicle. In some versions, you'll also get smoked out tail lamps. The India Spec Swift will get its usual palette that comprises white, silver, grey, orange, red, blue and black. But we could also see the return of green and at least one matte paint scheme as both of these have become popular choices for those that like to stand out. Moving on to the inside of the car, we can see a very similar layout but with quite a few new elements. Suzuki has gone for a stack layout where the things stand on top of each other. One of the biggest changes you can notice is the climate control interface. Gone are the dials of the older car with the digital display inside. Instead, Suzuki has gone for a flat out display with toggle switches. Pictures of the European spec model and even the Japanese spec model reveal that the overall layout of the second row remains more or less the same. This means you get seating for three, now with headrest for all three occupants. You get bottle holders in both the doors and as usual, a central cup holder between the front seats for the rear occupants. The car has grown in overall length by 20 mm, but the wheelbase remains unchanged, which means that you'll get roughly the same amount of space inside. And this means that it still retains the 268 litre boot that comes with the current car. And as is the case with every Maruti since the original uh, 800 back in 1983, the rear seats fold down for additional cargo space. Internationally, in addition to the usual like climate control, connected car technology, LED light package, a touchscreen infotainment system with wireless phone mirroring, height adjustment for the driver's seat, Suzuki has also included Level 2 ADAS for the first time to comply with new safety regulations. In fact, this Level 2 ADAS has earned it a 5 out of 5 score in 6 out of 7 tests conducted as a part of the latest round of JNCAP tests. Now let's be a little realistic, the Level 2 ADAS is not expected to come to the Swift as it will hike up the price of the car significantly, moving it away from its expected segment position. Uh, what's more, Maruti Suzuki has not yet introduced Level 2 ADAS either for the Grand Vitara or the Invicto, which means that if its flagships haven't got it, the smaller car still has to wait in line. Globally, in terms of powertrains, Suzuki has introduced a new mild hybrid petrol engine that can either be had with a 5-speed manual or a CVT. However, we believe that that engine is unlikely to come to India at this point and instead, the new Swift will continue with the K12C petrol engine that the current car has. This engine produces 88 bhp and 113 nm of torque in petrol guys and can either be had with a 5-speed manual or a 5-speed AMT. You can also have this engine in CNG guys where it produces 76 bhp and 98.5 nm of torque and is only offered with a 5-speed manual. This new Swift rivals are a diverse pack in terms of body style. Now on one end, you have top-end versions of cars like the Maruti Celerio and the Maruti Wagonar. But on the other end, you also have vehicles like the Renault Triber as well as some of the sub 4 meter SUVs in their more entry-level versions like the Brezza, Franck, Skyger and the Magnite. But the biggest rival for the Maruti Suzuki Swift is the Hyundai Grand i10 Neos. In fact, they have always been rivals since both cars were introduced. We have driven the updated Grand i10 Neos and you can check out our review, link to which is in the description below. Now the important question, has Maruti done enough for the update of the Swift? 
on paper at least the update looks more like a facelift rather than an all new generation but there's a very good reason for that and we've checked that out in three ways now the first is the fact that the swift is a very very successful product uh, let's put it this way until the swift came along maruti had just about managed to sell million cars and once the swift came along it didn't take more than 2 years for maruti to sell its next million cars you could understand just what kind of impact it had right maruti had an expectation of selling uh, 50000 cars in the first year but ended up selling something like 62000 so you can see a huge difference uh, what we're essentially saying is that the swift is popular across multiple generations it's got uh, a fan following across different generations which means that even if maruti suzuki were to hive it off on their own into a separate brand it would just work out like in fact we be able to confidently say that when this car is launched it will just take over where the old one left off in terms of sale numbers now the other big thing is and this is something that maruti suzuki themselves have said in the past is that their small car sales that includes things like the celerio wagon or swift Uh, have all plateaued out it's not going to increase it's not going to decrease and they experienced that in 22 they experienced that in 23 and of the small cars this is the most successful one and uh, their focus right now is to develop their suv lineup and to develop their bev lineup so if you look at it this way they need to put bigger focus and bigger investment into something that they are getting into the first time which means that what is not broken literally doesn't need to be fixed right they just needed to update the swift to bring it into the modern generation and prop it to run along on its own uh, we have looked at this uh, three points in detail and you can check out our separate story the link to which is in the description below so there you have it our thoughts on the new maruti suzuki swift what do you think of the car do let us know in the comment section below also before we sign off here's a reminder are you enjoying the content on this channel then do hit those like share and subscribe buttons and also that bell icon to be notified the instant we put out a new video thank you so much for watching take care